we have a special treat for you. We have some wonderful people who love children, who love our children, and they're going to be reading to you today. First of all, we have Mr. Carl Lumley. I want you all to get up out of your chair and stand up and give him a warm open welcome. Anyone who know who Langston Hughes is? Oh my word, all right. So you know that he was an amazing poet and uh, a writer. And this is a book of, that an illustrator, somebody who makes illustrations made of one of his poems. And the poem is called, The Negro Speaks of Rivers. And before I read the poem itself, I want to read what the man who drew the pictures had to say about why he wrote the poem. I remember reading about Langston Hughes when I was a young boy. I was amazed that he was just 18 when he wrote The Negro Speaks of Rivers. His precocity and insight have continued to fascinate me as an adult. When I was approached about illustrating this project, I leaped at the opportunity. Illustration is the visual interpretation of the written word, and I am honored to interpret Hughes' words through my own art. I read the poem over and over, and as I visualized the meaning of the words, Hughes' work became as personal as a prayer. More was revealed to me each time I read it, and I began to truly understand the poem's essence. Water has played an important, powerful role in the lives of black people. It has been the boon and the bane of our existence. We have been born out of water, baptized by water, carried by, and even killed by water. After nearly drowning as a child, I have grown to acknowledge and respect this awesome element of water. I still feel drawn to it. In fact, it's what I most enjoy painting. In many ways, my life is like this poem. Water almost ended my life, but now, through my watercolors, is painted. It has cultivated the spring of my life. In celebration of the role of water in my life, I chose to depict myself as one of the people in this book. In that piece, I am praying, and the river is embracing me. So, after I read this, I'm going to pass this book around, and you can see if you can find the man who drew this because he's praying at one point. You may see it as we go through it. So let's begin. This is dedicated to the heroes of the civil rights movement. I've known rivers. I've known rivers as ancient as the world. And older than the flow of human blood in human veins. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. I bathed in the Euphrates when dawns were young. I built my hut near the Congo and it lulled me to sleep. Has anybody ever slept in a hammock? It's a very comfortable sleep. You know what you know what it's like. It's nice. Isn't it? mm -hmm. <clears throat> I looked upon the Nile and raised pyramids to it. I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abraham Lincoln went down to New Orleans. And 
I've seen its muddy bosom turn all golden in the sunset. The sun shining on the water of the Mississippi River at sunset. Very golden, very, very, very pretty. I've known rivers. Ancient, dusty rivers. This river is so old, there's no water in it anymore. But you can tell where it's been because of the way it left the land. All dried up and cracked. A little bit like this person's feet. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. So I'm going to pass this around, and as, a, as you look at it, I want to just tell you three things. He speaks of four rivers, the Congo, the Euphrates, and the Nile. The Congo is one of the deepest rivers in the world. At some places, about 750 feet deep. Very, very deep, deep river. If you took a football field and you stood it on its end, the depth of that would be almost to the 80 yard line. So that's a very, very deep, yes sir, very, very deep, deep river. And the Nile was the longest river. And people, African people, used to build near rivers because you would get water and food and transportation. You could go places. So rivers have always been very, very important. And Langston Hughes loved Africa. When he was 18, he wrote this, and he had never been to Africa. But he knew how important Africa was to our people. And what he was trying to do with his poem, even at 18, was he was trying to tell us that we came from something. That Africa existed, it was real, it was powerful and important. 